Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Dom and today we are checking out all of the new features here in DJ2. This is a new app available on the App Store and there's an iPhone, iPod Touch version and also an iPad version of it. But there are some pretty awesome features here and I just want to give you guys a quick walkthrough of some of these standout features that I noticed and I thought were pretty cool. And I just want to kind of show you guys what it's all about. It's a huge upgrade from the previous version of DJ. So let's get right into this. Now on the main screen here, you're probably familiar with this layout. It's the same style of layout that you saw in the first DJ app. But we have these colorful waveforms here at the top and as you can see, they are actually colored according to specific parts of the song. So these two parts are similar, these two parts are similar, and you can see that reflected in the color of the waveform. So it's actually a pretty cool little feature there. You can quickly glance at it and be able to tell you know, which part is coming up, whether that be a verse or a chorus. You can quickly jump to them if you need to, just based on looking at the color of the waveform there. If that's not enough, we also have an expanded waveform view. So if we tap on the little waveform button right below the record button there, we can pull open this giant HD waveform view and it looks very nice. Let me just turn this down real quick and I'll play this for you so you can see them scrolling along. They actually do look very, very nice and you have different color coding depending on which type of instrument is in the song. So you can see right here we have this orange waveform on the left. That is actually a kick drum and then we have the blue one as the snare. So we have you know, a kick right there, another kick drum, and then a snare hit right there. And you can visually see those right in the waveform as it's playing. So it's a very, very handy feature. Now, inside of the same waveform view, we do have the ability to use a couple other awesome features in here. We have the slip feature at the bottom. And if you turn that on, and let's say the song is playing, you can hear it right now. If you go to scratch on the track, it'll actually keep the song playing in the background and drop it back in perfect time when you let go. So I'm not a DJ, so don't take this as like a real world example, but if I'm scratching and then I let go, it'll drop the song right back in time, especially if it's synced with another song here. So I can go ahead and scratch and then it'll drop right back in time as you can see right there. Pretty cool little feature. Uh, the next thing we have here is a grid feature. And this grid feature allows you to play the song basically like a piano. So I'm gonna pause this real quick and we can actually tap on these and just play them in sampled cuts like this instead of playing you know, an entire section of the song or looping it. You have these little sampled out cuts right here in the waveform view, which can be pretty helpful depending on what you're trying to do. So. I really do enjoy these two little features. They actually make for a really great addition here. Now we also do have a nice new loop pad. So inside of the looping section here, you can see we have a pad section on the far right. And you do actually have that same effect reflected on both decks here on the left side and the right side. So if we go back into here and let's say we're playing this song, we can tap and hold and move around on the pad to create a different loop effect. So check this out. So you guys get the point there. Pretty cool little pad loop right here. I, I really do like that effect. It actually works very well also. Uh, so this is the waveform view. Just a quick little overview. I'm not going to get into everything involved in here. There's quite a bit inside of DJ2, but the one thing I want to show you is the sampler. And you can actually access that here by tapping on this little middle button, or you can even access it from the deck view, from the uh, turntable view by tapping on that same button in the middle. And we have all of our sample pads here. So we have just various effects like a foghorn and a DJ sound effect, DJ, DJ. gunshot, just random stuff. Over on the right side, we have different instruments and you can actually change these up. So if I tap on the edit button here and then I tap on the little music note icon, we can go to sample packs and switch them out with 
different samples here. So I want to make this one a siren and then I want to make it green and I can change the color down there at the bottom as you can see. And then we have a few other packs in here. Now I'm assuming that they're going to be adding extra packs as they expand this uh, DJ2 application. You might be able to purchase add-on packs. I don't know for sure. Just my guess here. But let me show you something really cool. We can actually sample in real time from one of the decks that's playing. So I'm going to play this deck here, go back into the pad to edit it. And if I tap and hold on one of these uh, buttons down here at the bottom corresponding to each of the decks, it'll actually record a sample in real time. Check it out. So as you can see up there at the top, it's recording the sample. And then when I let go, we have sample six right here selected. And then of course we can go in there and rename it to Dom's sample. Tap on done and we're good to go. And then you can also open it in applications such as Dropbox or, or something like that. Any compatible application that will uh, open up an audio file, you can open it with that app down here by using this open in button. So let's go back out. And now we have Dom sample right there. Again, you can change the color to uh, any of those colors there at the bottom and tap on done to complete your editing. Now you also do have independent uh, volume control for the samples here as well, which is pretty cool. Now, let's back out of here. Now, what if I have a deck playing and I want to access these samples, let's say on just the right side? Well, I can actually drag from the sample button there, from the sampler button, and pull it over to the right or the left and just open that side of the sampler. And then I can press any of the buttons as I'd like to use those sample pads. That's a pretty cool little feature and you can do that on the left side as well. You can even interact with it while you're dragging it over with the power of multi-touch there. It's pretty awesome though. And of course you can do the same thing here in waveform view. You can access that side of the pad just by sliding over. You can still even touch it as you're moving it away. So uh, just little details like that, I guess, make an app very nice. Now, if we go back into the turntable view, this is one thing that these, these little details like this make apps shine, in my opinion. So on the record here, we actually have real grooves that are rendered for each song. So as you can see, the grooves on this vinyl or this virtual vinyl are different from the ones over here. And that is because, like I said, they are rendered specifically for each song to match up with the breaks. So if we drag this over here to that break, you can see that little dip in the in the vinyl right here, that little gap, that is corresponding to that specific break in the song. I mean, not that it really matters or it's really practical, but it's that kind of detail that makes apps like this really great. Now let's go ahead and check out the music library because there's quite a few features involved here. If we go into add a track, let's tap on the little music sign right here. We pull up the little music library and it's cute. It's kind of small, but that's not really enough space all the time. So if you tap on this little expander button in the corner, you can actually expand the library to full screen. And if it's too bright for you, this bright white right here, you can even turn on this club mode and it'll darken it up a little bit so you can see everything a lot better. Now, of course, you have all your BPMs, times, artists, and track name listed in here, but you can even sort them by BPM. So I can have them all sorted by a specific BPM, or I can sort them by title, artist, time, anything like that. And then we have this analyze button here at the top that'll allow you to analyze the songs in your library. You can analyze all of them, so they're all ready to go. Another thing we have at the bottom is the queue. Now inside of this queue, you can actually drag tracks over just by swiping them over like that for your specific deck. So you can create a queue for each deck and it's pretty awesome in my opinion. And then you can tap on the edit button and then rearrange those songs within the deck here. Tap on done when you're done or you can swipe to delete them if you don't want it there anymore. What if you had a set from, I don't know, like a few days ago and you really liked the songs that were in it but you can't remember? They actually have a history button here at the bottom and it'll save the songs that you are playing in your current session. So as you can see, I have uh, four songs in this session. I can even rename the session by tapping on this rename button right here, rename the current session, or I can just start a new session completely wiping out um, the existing session that was there. Pretty cool features here inside of the music library. 
Uh, I really do like some of the features they put in it. It just makes it more of a pro app. Now, obviously, you're not going to be DJing a bunch of clubs with just an iPad, but it does help out when you have these expansive tools within the application. It really does make it a breeze to use, in my opinion. Now, the last thing here that you can do inside of the music library is preview tracks. So if we tap and hold on a track here, let's tap and hold on one of these tracks. You can then tap the preview button and preview the track right there inside of the library. And then of course you can pause it when you're done and back out of the library if you need to. But it just gives you a way to preview them on the fly. And if you have the DJ uh, connector hooked up like that, I think a couple of people make them. Griffin makes one I know for sure. If you have that hooked up, it'll actually route that preview through your headphones as opposed to through the regular speaker output, which is definitely helpful when you're trying to prep things for the next song in line. And the last thing I want to show you here is portrait mode. That's right. We can actually flip this over and go into portrait mode here within the DJ app. And that works for the waveform view or the turntable view, either one. And then of course you can switch to the other table just by tapping that arrow there at the bottom. So this will conclude my overview of DJ2. I just wanted to give you guys a look at some of the features that I thought were cool and a lot of the new features inside of the app. So go ahead and check it out. Right now for the next seven days, it's available 50% off. You can get it for 99 cents for the iPhone version and 4.99 for the iPad version. And I'll drop links down below for you in case you wanna go check it out. After the week sale is up, it will go up another 50% from there so keep that in mind but let me know what you think about DJ2 down in the comments below and leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video thanks again for watching everybody this is Dom and have a great day <laughs>